Hello, welcome to my second video on Rookwood Cemetery. It's the largest cemetery in the Southern Hemisphere and the largest cemetery in the world of the Victorian area that's still operating. This video I want to talk about, uh, or at least show you, churches, monuments and some important graves. This uh, fabulous Celtic cross was erected over the vault of the Marr family. That's M-A-H-E-R. Timothy Marr was a, uh, a merchant furniture manufacturer who ran Moore's Labour Bazaar in Pitt Street, Sydney during the 1850s and 60s. It was the largest general furnishing store of any in the Australian colonies at the time. This is the St. Michael the Archangel Chapel. It was also in my last video, but not really covered in very much detail, so I thought I'd bring it back a little, talk a little bit more about it. This chapel was designed in the mid-1880s, and it's one of the most uh, wonderful examples of Gothic revival style. And it's got beautiful stained glass windows, depicting four evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, as well as St. Bridget, the sacred heart of Jesus. So uh, this beautiful little church has a bit of a strange, uh, strange history. The uh, the statue on the over the bell coat was actually destroyed twice by lightning, and was finally replaced in 2007, and has a uh, has a lightning rod attached to it. So hopefully it won't be destroyed again. Here we see the footings of the uh, mortuary station, which was built around 18, uh, 1869, I think it was. And it remained until the, um, I th think it was around 1948. And it was demolished, but piece by piece, and each of the pieces were actually labelled. And the uh, building was reassembled in Canberra, in Ainsley, actually, and became... Um, became the uh, All Souls, uh, sorry, All Saints Church um, in Ainsley and where it stands to this day. The interesting thing uh, you'll see in the next photograph is uh, a photo of the, uh, the station as it stood back in the day and the bell tower is actually on the left hand side but the photo that you see of the church as it stands today, they for some reason put the uh, bell tower on the opposite side. This uh, next crypt is actually of a fellow by the name of Frederick Pote, who was the Surveyor General of New South Wales and died in 1927. It contains his wife Julia and their descendants. We're heading east now, approaching the All Souls Chapel. It was built in 1954, and it's a uh, oh, heritage charm with a state of art furnishings and facilities, uh, Art Deco style. Um, in the background, you can see the CBD of Sydney, and just to the left on the horizon, you might be able to pick out the Sydney Harbour Bridge.
Heading back to the west now, we're approaching the Saint Athanasios Church, which is a Greek Orthodox Church. Quite a large one too, if you can see this from the air. Veering south now, we're approaching the Temple of Eternal Rest. And this is a unique alternative to the lawn and monumental burials that you've seen elsewhere. Much more modern uh, architecture here and structure. This is just another view of the Chapel of Eternal Rest. Looking back in the opposite direction, you can see just in the top right the Church of Athanasios where we were just uh, were previously. Continuing back to the northeast now, we're approaching the Rookwood Russian Memorial. As we're going further north now, we're approaching what's uh, become a little bit of a curiosity in the uh, in the cemetery a building that houses no um, no mortal remains. But um, it it's called the Elephant House because it resembles the arches of uh, of the the Elephant House at Taronga Zoo. Uh, it was built in 1878 and uh, originally called the Red Rest House or the Ornamental House. Um, it's now commonly called referred to as the Elephant House, but uh, it was originally uh, it was ri originally intended for a sort of a rest a rest place for people uh, uh, who were visiting the, um, the cemetery and for a while was actually used as the uh, as the office for the administration for nearly 20 years. And after the Great Depression, um, the administration was relocated and uh, was reconverted to a rest house and occasionally used, uh, as an official sleeping destination for homeless people. Um, and it was, there was even folklore saying that it was used as a two-up school. And, uh, but as you will see later, there's, there's really no, uh, there's nothing in sight now. But it, uh, it has borne witness to some of Sydney's most extravagant funerals, such as Mae Kwong Tart, whose grave we will visit soon, uh, Peter Dawson, John Fairfax and David Jones. Here we see the grave of a, uh, a Chinese gentleman by the name of Mei Kuang Tart. He was a prominent 19th century Sydney merchant from China, made a lot of money in the gold fields and then set up businesses in Sydney, uh, most notably a tea house in the Queen Victoria building. And uh, one day apparently he was uh, there was a botched robbery and he was savagely beaten with an iron bar. and. Uh, as he was recovering, he, he suffered pleurisy and died in 1903. And he was a very, very popular foe, lived in Ashfield. And you can see the following pictures of, his, uh, of him and his family. He's got three daughters. In fact, one of his daughters is buried 
with him, this little inscription underneath, um, underneath his uh, own uh, his own name, on his grave there, and you can see the funeral procession uh, that was marching outside his house in Ashfield, and then they had a, a massive procession in one of the main streets of Ashfield itself, complete with a brass band. So a very popular gentleman. Uh, so so much for Mei Kuang Tart, died in. Uh, 26th of July, 1903. There's a photo here of uh, Mei Kuang Tart's residence as it is now. It's been converted into the Uniting Kuang Tart Aged Care Facility for Chinese aged care. They have Cantonese and Mandarin speaking staff warmly welcome you with round the clock care. On a more sombre note now, we see the, um, this is the memorial for the, uh, the Jewish people who were, who were basically murdered during the Second World War, the Holocaust. And this is a memorial to them. And it's um, just uh, going further north from Mo Kwong Tart's grave back towards the, uh, the uh, uh, mortuary station. And it basically says, in memory of six million Jews killed by the Nazis during World War, 1939-1945, may the world never again witness such inhumanity of man against man. You see the circular wall surrounding the uh, memorial here. It's got the names of all the uh, death camps that uh, were responsible for for the deaths of all of these people. This is part of the in independent part of the cemetery uh, and you can see the expanse of this uh, this part of the cemetery here runs for nearly half a kilometre and uh, as we've seen through this video and the pre preceding one that I did how large this is uh, there are around about one million people in, uh, interred here and you think of the memorial we've just visited uh, the six million uh, Jews who perished during the Second World War, that would be six times the size of this cemetery. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope, uh, I hope it's been of some uh, inform, informed a lot of you out there, um, and maybe you might want to visit. It's a fascinating place. Uh, so make some comments and give me a thumbs up, and uh, thank you very much for watching.